Grass-fed versus grain-fed beef. In this video, I'd like to cover nutrients, n antibiotics, you know, negatives of farming practices. We're going to taste them both raw and cooked as well. And just kind of tackle any question you might have in regards to grain-fed versus grass-fed beef. Now, we know grass-fed beef has three to ten times the amount of certain vitamins, from carotenoids to vitamin E to various omega-3 fatty acids. The question is, how dependent is that on pasture quality? And that's the real kicker here. Not only is it dependent on pasture quality, grain-fed beef can have multiple times the amount of fat that grass-fed beef does. So although a piece of grass-fed beef might be, you know, three to five times higher in an omega-3, it might not have the same amount of fat. So it might even out in the long run. So we kind of got to brush, have to brush the nutrient concern slightly to the side only because, you know, you could just take a teaspoon of cod liver oil, eat some liver, get your nutrients in other ways. The next concern is the antibiotic usage in these meats. And there, I have a lot of evidence I'm going to link you guys. It definitely impacts gut bacteria. It definitely damages your health overall. This is the main concern with, and not even just grain-fed beef. You could give antibiotics to a grass-fed animal. So, you know, the lower quality your meat is, all of those concerns, like, this is the main concern and the main reason I would stay away from grain-fed beef. Not only that, the way they feed the animals, the animals are sick, they're not raised in the most ethical conditions. There's multiple reasons not to consume grain-fed beef from any perspective, any way you put it. And this doesn't take into account like chicken, pork, high omega-6 ratios, the inflammatory aspects of that. There's multiple negative things that we know you shouldn't be consuming grain-fed beef. Now, hypothetically, if the animal wasn't fed antibiotics, and you ate liver and cod liver oil and supplements and other nutrients, would you be fine? I would think so. So let's move on to tasting these foods and kind of hypothetically think why would someone want to eat grain-fed beef over grass-fed beef. So I just went to the supermarket and purchased what I thought was a fair comparison for beef. So I bought a grain-fed ribeye and I bought some grass-fed ribeyes. And if we put these, let's choose the both of these grass-fed ribeyes are pretty much the same. How do we tell the difference between grain-fed and grass-fed beef? And in this example, it is painfully obvious. You know, the grain-fed beef tends to be a slightly lighter color. The fat is much more white. This is the main determining factor. Obviously, if the fat was yellow on both of these steaks, you know, even though we can see this is a deeper red, it's not as apparent of a difference. Uh, so what we're looking at is the color. The grain-fed beef is lighter. The fat tends to be much wider in color because the animals store the nutrients in their fat. And you know, from, from looking at the beef, you can almost always tell if it's grass-fed or if it's American grain-fed. In other countries, the differences are much more drastic. And of course, the size of the steak. You know, these animals are bred to be much larger. Uh, you know, and even though the fat distribution on these steaks, you know, it's not as big of a difference between the fat levels as it is the size and the sh of the steak. You know, there's very apparent differences here. And, uh, you know, one analogy I like to make is, you know, and, and this, is the, this is the reason I think a lot of people like grain-fed. Like, if you don't have grass-fed butter, if you don't have trim fat to eat with this, then how can you expect to make up for the fat content? And that's probably why some people don't feel good on grass-fed beef. I mean, in regards to fat content of these two steaks, it's actually pretty close. So... You know, but for the most part, if this was a leaner steak, you know, th it helps to have this fat, butter, egg yolks. Here I have some fertile pastured eggs. Those are all great sources of fat. Okay, we're going to taste these steaks raw and go over the flavor. And first we're going to taste the fat of each steak, then we're going to taste the, the protein of each steak. So here's a piece of the grain-fed fat. has a very, it's white, very hard when I squeeze it. This is why, like, if people haven't tried raw primal or just tasted raw grain-fed beef compared to raw grass-fed beef, like, I just don't understand how they haven't done that. That's gross. Now, I'm going to try the, the protein on the grain-fed. It's not bad. It's tender. Very lean. Has, you know, that grain-fed beef taste. It's not, not nearly as bad as the fat. Now, I'm going to try the fat on the grass-fed steak. So it's a bit, you know, it's a bit more yellow, off-white. When I squeeze it, it's softer.
Doesn't have that off taste. Now I'm going to taste the, the lean part of the grass fed. Not as tender, definitely chewier, definitely different flavor. I personally like the grass fed flavor more. This one doesn't really taste gamey or like grassy, but you know, guys, taste some raw grain fed fat and then taste some raw grass fed fat and tell me I'm crazy. Like, to me, what we'll see later is after I cook these steaks and taste them, you'll understand that the char flavor and the salt and everything covers up the negative taste of the grain fed beef because I can't even decipher those negative tastes after tasting, uh, after cooking it and seasoning it and everything. Okay guys, so I prepared the steaks the same way. I did cook the grass fed steak a bit less because that's just how I like it, but I cook the, uh, the grain fed steak to about medium rare where most people like it. This is the temperature of the grain fed steak. And the grass fed steak is cooked below. So, as I spoke about earlier, I think the reason people like grain fed steak so much is because it's more tender and the salt and the grill flavor covers up the negative flavors of the fat. So let's see how true that holds. So I'm going to try uh, just the eye part of the steak first for the grain fed. Now I'm going to try the, the spinalis part of the grain fed steak. The more tender and more flavorful part. I mean, I think it's delicious. Um, you no know, black pepper, salt crust, perfect char from the grill. I think it tastes good. So let's try the grass fed steak now. Both of these steaks are delicious. For me, the grass-fed steak has way better flavor. Some people, I don't really taste the grassy or gaminess in this. Sometimes people might just get some bad beef. I will say, I think most people might actually like the grain-fed steak more because most of the time it has more fat. If this grass-fed steak didn't have almost as much fat, we might be having a different conversation. Also, the grain-fed steak is more tender. That's, I think, the main driving factor behind why people like grain-fed. Obviously, if you were eating this raw, you know, the grain-fed just has an off taste to it. So, I think we can understand why people on the zero-carb carnivore diet enjoy eating grain-fed beef so much. I'm sure if they experimented with raw primal, I'm sure if they experimented with organ meats, they would understand the importance of quality and how the food tastes. Now, can you go to the supermarket and just sear grain-fed ribeyes? I think that's enjoyable and tasty, but... I noticed that trying Sean Baker's diet for two days, I was always hungry, I was bloated, I just felt like I couldn't fill up my stomach. Not to mention the negative antibiotic possibilities, you know, the lower nutrient content. So overall, I think we just need to summarize that, you know, regardless, the zero carb carnivore diet will be healthier than all other diets because you remove inflammation. That being said, increasing the vitamin content of the diet drastically improves metabolic function, digestive health, removes other negative things, I think that's taking the real next step. And for anyone saying, oh well, an animals are meant to be fed grains, well, a crude soy feed made from corn and corn flakes and candy and all that BS, yes, if we had a high quality, grain finished, antibiotic free cow, that's not what you're buying in the supermarket, guys, I hate to break it to you. And who's to say even the grass fed beef I buy is antibiotic free, so you never really know. These are just the pros and cons of both. I kind of said, I mean, I've tasted fatty grain-fed beef that tastes better than lean grass-fed beef. I think grass-fed beef tends to taste better on the lighter cooking temperature 
That's why most people uh, don't like it as much. Just so many factors are going to taste and flavor and just people would rather prefer salt, char, and tenderness over the extra flavor that the grass-fed beef has. So, you know, in other videos, we could take some fat here and there. We could compare liver. I might compare butter. I might compare egg yolks. But what's the point of really doing those things? Because they always taste better. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to argue that grass-fed butter tastes worse or, or things like that. If you guys like to support me, please just share the video. I'm going to put links for the nutrient content of grass-fed versus grain-fed as well as the, the negatives of the antibiotics. And if you guys want to compare me to the other carnivores, if you guys want to say, oh, well, Sean Baker does this, Mikhail Peterson does this, come on. Please. Who looks like they used to make marble sculptures out of them? Let's be honest.